Welcome to The Disruption Is Now, AI and the Changing Face of Corporate Communications and PR. Join us on this enlightening journey as we explore the role of artificial intelligence in our lives and businesses. Each episode, host Greg Matuski will converse with visionaries and innovators at the forefront of AI, diving into its challenges, opportunities and impact. So buckle up as we venture into the heart of disruption and together, let's unfold the future. And welcome back to another episode of The Disruption Is Now, the AI podcast about how artificial intelligence is disrupting many of us in industry. You know, it's estimated that it'll just, it'll affect some 300 million jobs around the globe. I'm Greg Matuski, and I'm the CEO of Gregory FC. I'm coming to you from our studios right outside of Philadelphia. I share with you a quick story that happened to me this weekend. And I went to a neighborhood party and it seems like everybody in my neighborhood is either a wealth manager or a financial planner. And we started talking about what's new and hot. And I started explaining how my firm, Gregory FCA, has really embraced our AI, generative AI. We've even built our own internal platform for productivity and uh, quality of work product. And they all started to lean in. Everyone started to listen. The conversation became real serious and people started to ask me, wealth managers, financial planners, they started to ask, will it take our jobs? And I looked at them and I thought, hmm, now I think it's going to be pretty disruptive in public relations. But when it comes to money, I really think people want to deal with people. And I think there's going to be aspects that affect how financial planners and advisories work. But I think in the end, when it's everything's on the line, you're going to want to talk uh, to people. So that brings me to my guest today. I'm excited about this. Yelena Melamed. She is the co-founder and product developer at Catchlight. Now, this is a, a very interesting company because it's working with advisories to help them optimize and select, optimize leads and then selectively communicate with their audiences. And this really goes to the heart of what AI can do, not as a replacement, but rather as a human augmentation of what you do. Yelena, thanks for being with us. Did I get that right? Is that what Catchlight's doing? You got it, Greg. And thanks for having me. Um, we really help advisors think about um, the leads they have um, and the opportunities they're considering, how to focus their time on the ones that are the right fit for them and where they can formulate relationships and personalize them. And I'm really interested in how that's being done, because I understand it's part machine learning, part artificial intelligence, AI, but everybody in business, like we spend so much time in business development chasing our tails sometimes, not knowing what prospects are real or most productive. How are you doing that and helping the advisories? So advisors that we've worked with, and I've, I've been in the industry for a long time, about 23 years, building products for wealth managers. And almost every single time I developed a product and delivered it to an advisor, what we've heard consistently is, how does that help me grow my business? And as we drilled into that problem in particular, what we learned is advisors actually have quite a bit of opportunities they're exploring. They may be coming from referrals. They may be coming from cold leads um, from a collection of sources. But the challenge is having a consistent insight um, about those leads. Uh, what's their holistic background? And how do you use that insight to prioritize where you focus your attention and then use that same insight to personalize your outreach? So that's what we focus on and um, leveraging um, a collection of different features in order to get that done. And there's no better person to be doing that. You have some 18 years of prior experience with Fidelity, creating tools. Tell me what led you to become an entrepreneur. And now I understand you're in uh, the Fidelity Labs also. You're at one of their portfolio companies, if I understand correctly. That's right. So Catchlight was built out of uh, Fidelity Labs. Uh, so I've definitely had a long uh, career at Fidelity. It's been uh, super rewarding in order to be able to build really data-driven products, everything from workplace investing to institutional trading, order management, portfolio analytics. So super, super data-driven products. Um, so the opportunity to really dig into advisory growth um, and support it um, in a differentiated way is what got me to where I am today. And tell me about this notion of prioritizing and optimizing those leads. Um, what is the perfect prospect? Is there such a thing? 
Um, that's a great question. Um, I think um, there is such a wide collection of focus and niches across um, the wealth management space. Um, there's no single great prospect for one person. Um, there is uh, people um, who need support um, in partnership with a financial advisor. Each advisor serves a slightly different segment. And it is our job um, to use data to help drive really um, trying to tie the the, what the advisory support model is and what is the right uh, possible prospect for them. So what are you looking for in the profile of these leads and how is, where is the data coming from and what does it inform uh, you to be able to prioritize them? Sure. So we, um, we start with very few pieces of information, oftentimes a name and um, either an email address, a phone number or a mailing address and then what we do is we go to real-time research, um, often leaning on public record data or first-party disclosed market, like marketing affiliate data, in order to comprehensively create a profile. And that profile is everything from hobbies all the way to our projections and in liquid investable assets at the household level, income, really to understand the person holistically. Um, we then uh, leverage that data to really paint the profile for the advisor so that they can very easily um, set, use their segments and their focus in order to filter their list to focus their attention on where they do business today. Um, and then we apply a number of pieces of um, AI, um, like machine learning models, in order to help them focus their time and organize their thinking about who they might reach out to first. Now, I've been a part of some software builds, and they always, for me, have failed to meet my expectations. But with your model, it's surprising what it can tease out. Could you give us some examples of that? Sure. So what our model is based on, um, which we friendly refer to as the Kitchlight score, um, it is trained on a growing set at this point, about 180,000 successful conversions for paid advice relationships. So when you know, an investor or a consumer raised their hand and said, yes, I want to partner with an advisor for a fee. And what we are focused on is really statistics. Um, I'm going to make it super simple um, and understanding what is the profile? What are the characteristics of a profile that makes someone convert? What is that point in your lifetime that you need a support of a financial advisor? That insight um, and statistical importance of the various features, the characteristics of your profile as an investor, um, really work to support our model so that we are able to apply that insight to the advisor's own lead list in the form of a score. So um, somebody may be scored higher um, and therefore more correlatory with those that buy advice or lower, uh, less correlatory. So does it follow the traditional life cycle of investment where, you know, once you have a child, you become concerned about college planning and life insurance, and then uh, you start a business and you, you need funding. And then, and then when you reach your senior years, you want some exit strategy from your business, or, or is it much more detailed and complicated than that? It's much more detailed. Um, I, I think we just look at the problem um, statement slightly differently. You know, coming into this role, and I think I've shared this with you, Greg, in the past, that um, I was wondering if we could truly build a model that would do anything other than just to pick out the wealthy out of a mix of a group of right, people. Right, and, right. And uh, that would be my expectation. You'd find the wealthiest. Right. The and that's the, the, the golf club uh, anecdote, right? Uh, you go to a golf club, everyone's a financial planning planner, everyone's a wealth manager, and they're looking for the wealthiest people to get into foursome with. Right. And I, I think, you know, in speaking to advisors, um, I'll tell you that anecdotally, um, absolutely, there is definitely a focus on the wealth, um, because that's where you need support, you need kind of sophisticated um, thought process about the planning and the goals that you're going to reach on the time horizon you're planning for. But um, what is was not consistent is that um, oftentimes advisors ended up in meetings with someone who might not pursue advice and were really just trying to evaluate their own investment expertise in partnership with a conversation advisor. And that's not the best way to invest time in a meeting, obviously, for an advisor. So um, going back to the model, our model looks at a really wide collection of data points. Um, sometimes uh, we're able to bring back up to 2,000 on each individual in the list. 
And so it's really a comprehensive way to see what drives people to advice, what drives them to need the support of a financial advisor. And it's not simply pulling out the wealth um, out of the mix. So can you share with us a little bit of what you've discovered and what drive, what is those drivers? Sure. So the model is retrained on a pretty regular basis, and especially uh, the tumultuous um, world that we've been in over the past couple of years. We've seen uh, a lot of characteristics bubble up to the top that weren't at the top before. Um, but um, some, you know, insights that I've took away, have taken away, heuristics based, um, I would say would be, you know, someone who has um, got complexity in their life, multiple dependents, houses across state lines, and so on. So things that would drive someone to need really support of someone thinking about their money, managing it for them and being thoughtful about how they get to the goal and the outcomes that the investor wants. And, and that's really the promise of AI, isn't it? To find non, non-traditional uh, uh, variables that somehow impact one another. That's, that's the goo that we don't see that could make real sense in, in everything as far as biz dev. Uh, that's right. And I, I think it's interesting that the industry has been talking about big data for such a long time. And yet we are um, so pleasantly surprised uh, in the kind of presence of AI. But um, perhaps the way to simplify the whole revolution is to think about how much we as an industry and even beyond um, have invested into being able to have massive compute power, work with big data, um, and really use it to the advantage to support, as you said before, the advisor experience, not just the advisor experience, but more broadly support us in our everyday. And, you know, that's for me, that's kind of the bridge between what we're seeing. You know, with big data, it was the age of information. And now I really think it's becoming the age of intelligence. I see this in my own business, right? When we use generative AI, the words were always information, the punctuation the syntax, but the message was the intelligence. And for the first time ever with generative AI, we don't have to worry about so much uh, concentrate on the information. I mean, it's important, but generative AI gives us that. It gives us AP style. It gives us writing style, but the message is really the intelligence. And I think that's what you're talking about. So Greg, one of the features that we have uh, within, um, Catchlight is um, really a different way to leverage AI, and that is to support advisors in um, their personalized outreach, really with the goal that um, we um, are looking to support them to through their engagement um, in a personalized way. How do we leverage the information that we've just uncovered on the prospect in order to power non-generic communications, either to a segment or to an individual? Um, One of the features and one of the ways that we do that is with generative AI. And um, and to go back to your point of using intelligence and really harnessing it is how do you take those powerful, powerful models and really drive them to the outcomes um, that you want? And um, I I tend to think about it as a three legged stool a little bit that the powerful generative model lives in the middle. It's the rocket, but you have to point the rocket in the right direction. And so um, first um, is the use case and the ground truth data that the model is trained on. It needs to be cold prospecting emails. Uh, It needs to be um, really thoughtfully uh, prompted in um, discovering a specific cold email for a prospect from a financial advisor. Um, But the other two legs of the stool are equally important. Who is it to? What do you know about that prospect that would make it personalized and valuable and would get them to open the email in the first place? And then lastly, and equally importantly, who is the advisor sending it? What's their communication style? What's their tone, as you said? But what is the type of products, the type of segments that they're focused on? And this is one of the features that we have within the product. To your point, really how to big data evolve to being, um, you know, the thing that powers intelligence and in the collection of different tooling, again, to support the advisor. And that's interesting. You really do parallel some of what I teach with regard to prompt writing and generative AI, the first rule of writing a prompt is who is the audience, right? That's number one. And the more specific you can be to the audience, the more effective your message will be. And then secondly, it's who is speaking, right? Who, who is the actual transmitter? And then third, what is their tone, right? And, 
I, I have these five pillars of a prompt. That's three right there. So congratulations. I'm a communications just fiend. I love everything to do about it. So I think you're right on mark. I'd like to thank you for being here today, Yelena. If, if people want to connect with you, it's catchlight.ai. And uh, you're doing some remarkable things. You've helped me learn more about uh, AI, not just for wealth management and financial planning, but certainly in the broader world. So thank you for being with us and uh, best of luck in everything that Catchlight has on its uh, growth plans. Thanks for having me, Greg. This podcast is a production of Gregory FCA. If you enjoyed our discussion today and want to continue exploring the transformative power of AI, please check out more episodes and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you.